Have you heard the news? I'm doing a series on puppy must-haves. Now, you have come to rely on me for awesome training advice, but I also help you wade through all those product ads and give you the honest review from a certified trainer. So far, I've reviewed treat dispensers <laughs> and great tools to help with biting. Now, I've got a playlist for must-haves here on this channel. Check it out before you shop. Today, it's time to talk about crates and gates. Now these tools are must-haves for any puppy, but which ones are the must-must-haves? Let's get to it. Michelle here with How to Train a Dream Dog. Now before we talk about must-haves, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. You're gonna love some of the videos I have lined up for you over the next few months. Okay, first things first. Let me remind you why crates are a critical part of puppy raising. We've gone over this before, so I'm gonna go kind of fast. Maybe you're wondering why you can't let your puppy roam around the house like normal dogs do? Well, I don't know about your normal dogs, but I have three grown dogs, and they still have crates and spaces of their own. Wesley is three, Pickles is four, and Harper is nine. Harper gets an entire room of her own due to some medical conditions. The number one reason why my dogs still spend time in their crates is safety. When you're not home, your puppy should be in a crate to keep her safe and your home safe. Puppies who get bored or anxious waiting for humans to get home often get into all kinds of trouble. Now the crate is gonna help your puppy rest and relax while you're gone. The crate also helps your puppy with potty training when your puppy's really young. Since dogs are less likely to go potty where they sleep, this helps strengthen the bladder muscle and teaches your puppy to hold it until she's in the right spot. Now, the crate is like a crib for a toddler. Not only does it keep her safe, but it also helps her rest. Puppies need a lot of sleep but they aren't so good at putting themselves down for a nap. So the crate helps enforce a much needed nap for a growing puppy. Finally, we consider the crate a lifetime arrangement. Now, even if you want to invite your puppy into bed when she's older, the crate will be used in situations like grooming, medical issues, travel, and a ton more. Now you're gonna want her to be comfortable in there, especially because these situations are already a bit stressful. Okay, so which crate to get? Well, here's the ones we like. Let's talk about the wire crate for a minute. Now, the benefits are that it comes in pieces, so it's possible to fold it or dismantle it and take it with you if you're going on a trip. We also like that the divider can make it smaller or larger so you can change the size as your puppy grows. Now, the wire crate makes it easy to see the puppy for you and for pet cameras. And it's also easy for crate training games because you can deliver the treat through the bars. So that sounds like a winning scenario, right? Well, there are a few things we don't love about this crate. This crate is a lot more noisy than another one I'm gonna tell you about in a minute. And it's actually harder to clean up than you would think. My pups have sensitive stomachs and we have had a blowout or two. The wire crate seems to get poo in all the crevices and the wall. <laughs> if you know, you know. Now the plastic one that I'm gonna tell you about next is better for cleaning up. The metal crate is not quite as cozy as the plastic one, both due to the light and the noise that it lets in. Now, when I first started raising and boarding dogs, we used the wire crates exclusively, but we've recently switched, and whenever I have a new pup in my house, the plastic crate is my choice. Now, don't panic if you have a wire crate, though. If it's working well for you, stick with it. As I mentioned, the plastic one is more cozy. It's easier to clean, it's a lot quieter and darker, which could lead to a more content puppy. Now, unfortunately, the plastic one isn't so versatile, so you definitely will have to purchase a new one when your puppy grows. Now, a few of my students tell me that their local pet stores have a trade-in policy, which allow them to upgrade to the next size. Sounds like a great plan to me. And Facebook Marketplace is a good source for used crates. Just be sure to clean it well with a kennel or hospital grade cleaner. I use Top Performance 256 Disinfectant. Now a downside of the plastic crate is that it often doesn't fit in your vehicle very well, especially if your dog is on the larger size. Now although the crate is the safest place for your dog in the car, you might have to use a harness seatbelt instead. Now I have a link to one I like in the description below, along with the links to these crates and more. So to sum it up, the plastic crate is my top pick with the wire crate at a close second. Now you might be asking, could I have one of each? You can, but just remember that this is gonna be two totally different crates to your dog. 
so you're going to need to desensitize each of them separately. Now I talk more about having two crates and two locations in this video on crate location. Next, I'll give you my top picks on puppy pens, which are another critical tool when you have a young puppy. But before we talk about puppy pens, I just want to give you a few of my nope products. Now, I do not recommend the fabric crates, like the ones you'd see on an airplane under the seat. Now, if you need to travel with your dog, that's about the one and only time I'd recommend them, but that's only if you can bring your dog in the cabin. Otherwise, they're gonna be a waste of money. Your dog will easily escape from that type and they often become a chew toy. And if your dog has a potty accident, well, that's just a mess that you can't easily clean up. Now, another one that I don't recommend yet is the crates that look like furniture. Yes, I get it, they are beautiful. And these plastic and wire ones are quite an eyesore. I know. The furniture type crates are really lovely if you wanna to move to that crate once the dog is fully grown. That might be a good option then. But while your pup is young and you're doing a lot of potty outings and crate training, stick to the basics. Now you would hate to ruin that really nice piece of furniture with a puppy not yet potty trained and who still loves to chew. By chance, are you loving this info? Do you appreciate that I'm giving you the real deal on crates and pens? Well, YouTube allows you to give me just a little tip as a sign of appreciation if you want. My team and I work really hard producing these videos for you week after week for no cost. So feel free to share the love with a little thanks button below. <laughs> now let's talk about the pens. Now when your puppy first comes home, I strongly recommend you have a pen for her. Now I recently fostered an adorable pity named Feta. She was eight weeks old when she was with me and we set her up in the crate and a pen combination, just like I did for Pickles. The pen allows her to be awake and playing independently, but still safe if I can't supervise her 100%. Now, although it's not a surefire way to prevent accidents, it still helps her from having an accident where I can't see it. Managing the space to prevent accidents is one of the key pillars to potty training. There are three other key pillars that will really help you throughout this challenging phase. Now, this free digital new puppy starter kit will get you started on a potty schedule, bell training, potty training, troubleshooting, and a bunch more. All right, let's get back to the pen. This pen can also be a great tool to use with small children. Meet Joan. She and Sammy are enrolled in my online course. Joan is a grandmother and she has been so creative in using the pen to keep Sammy safe when her grandkids are over visiting. Sammy's still young and excitable especially when Joan's grandchildren are around, and especially when those kids are on the floor. So Joan set up a pen to keep Sammy contained and separate from the kids. This is a great example of managing the space to make it work for everyone. Now, another time, the kids were visiting and wanted to do some arts and crafts, so Joan got out the pen for Sammy. The kids thought this was great fun and they asked to be inside the pen instead. Sammy stayed on the outside. The kids had fun doing arts and crafts on the floor and a good time was had by all. Now in the meantime, Joan's been working with Sammy on staying calm and quiet when the kids are around. We're guiding her through that process at the pro level of the course. It's a work in progress, but look how far they've come. Now, Joan also used the pen in some creative ways around the house. One day, Sammy realized that the dishwasher was the source of some yummy smells. He was a little too helpful when Joan was working in the kitchen. So, while she was training Sammy, Joan had to block off access to the dishwasher so he couldn't keep practicing the unwanted behavior. Brilliant, don't you think? You'll be glad to know that Sammy passed his training test with flying colors and now leaves the dishwasher alone. The pen was simply a temporary, but very necessary, measure while he was working up to the impulse control needed to leave it alone. Now, if impulse control sounds like something you need help with in your puppy's life, I have a great webinar that can help you. The Better Puppy Behavior Workshop is a deep dive into how dogs think and learn and how best to train them. You can register for a time that works best for you using the link in the description below. It's free. Okay, more on pens. There are a lot of different types of pens out there, but we recommend the ones with the vertical bars. Those bars make it a lot harder for your dog to climb out of. Now we also want to get the kind with a door. Now you don't want to have to lift your dog in and out of the pen each time. Now this could feel very uncomfortable to your dog and end up creating a negative association with being handled and the pen itself. Now we like the pens that move around because it keeps it flexible and you can use it in ways like Joan did. Instead of a pen, you could use baby gates and make a puppy-proofed area for your dog. I've done that with Harper, who really needed a lot of space 
because of her aching joints. So we gave her her own room. We keep the gates up so my other two dogs don't go in and bother her. Now you might be wondering how long you're gonna have to use these gates. Well, the answer might surprise you. Maybe a few months or maybe always. It really depends on your household and your dog. Now, as your pup gets older, you might be able to open up more space, but you might not. Now, if you're not sure when and how to give your dog more freedom, check out this video for some tips on how to get your puppy ready for fewer gates and more space. Now, the downside I've heard about the pen with the vertical bars is that very small dogs might be able to wiggle their way and walk right through. Now you might need to put up some thin plywood or a sheet of plastic or just zip tie something on the outside of the gate. Just take some measurements of what size you need at your local hardware store. They should have plenty of options and they might even cut it for you. Now if you need some good ideas on how people used gates or pens creatively, this video can help. And just like with crates, that fabric pen is a 100% nobody nope on our list for the same reasons. Just when you thought we've discussed every aspect of pens, I have one more to tell you about, the outdoor pen. So for the outdoors, we like to use a pen that's easy to move around. Now, this is not designed to keep the dog physically contained. It's really designed to block off parts of the outdoors that you don't want your dog to go to. Now, it's not safe to leave a dog outside alone with one of these fences, since even a small dog can knock it over easily. Some good uses would be to use it for a potty spot, especially if you have a lot of wild critters who visit you. Having a spot in the backyard for potty can help your puppy focus a little bit better. Now, not all puppies need this, but some find it helpful, at least at first. When I was fostering Feta, we used this outdoor pen to give her a small area so she could focus on going potty. She had a very short attention span, so this was really necessary. Now you can definitely use this to block off unsafe areas like around pools or gardens that have toxic plants. All right, here's Joan again. Here she is doing some desensitization work with Sammy and the wheelbarrow. But note the black pen in the background, which is keeping Sammy away from part of the yard. Well done, Joan. Okay, so I think you can see what we like and you can explore all the product recommendations with the link below. Of course, there are many, many options when it comes to crates and pens and gates. So do your due diligence to find one that works for you. Just try to remember that the features I discussed when you're shopping. All right, I've had a lot of dogs in crates and gates over the years, and these are the ones that really stand up to my high standards. Was this useful? Did you appreciate the straightforward suggestions? All right, I've got more to come. So in the comments below, tell me which products you'd like me to review next.